My name is Alan Silverman. Uh, I'm an audio engineer and a producer. I started at Electric Lady Studios some decades ago as a technician. My first day of work we had ACDC in Studio A, uh, Hall & Oates in Studio B, and the Rolling Stones in Studio C. I moved up to A&R Recording, which was owned by Phil Ramone, the legendary uh, record producer. And there we did film scores, Broadway shows. We had Stevie Nicks, we had Billy Joel. In the mid-90s, I went independent and formed my own company. Recording, mixing and editing, live concert specials for PBS. One of my former apprentices approached me to master a project. It was actually my first professional mastering job. It was for Eartha Kitt, and that CD won the Grammy that year for the best traditional pop vocal. Seventeen years later, we're still here at ARF Mastering and working on independent and major label projects from all around the globe. I've had the good fortune to be involved in music television and live performance for PBS for many years now. It's a truly exciting craft, doing whatever you can to serve the artist the best possible way. So once you realize that when your music gets out there, it's going to be what's called loudness normalized to a target level. And to know that target is pretty critical because that tells you how your project is going to sound on the air. The Calm Act was meant mainly to prevent TV commercials from being super, super loud. And although it regulates only commercials, it had a side effect in that the American broadcast companies realized, well, that it's going to regulate the program too. I find that the new loudness normalization efforts are liberating. I think they've liberated us from the tyranny of loud, 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 everything louder than everything else. Let's say your program is just a commuter on its way to work, and work is on your TV set or in your living room. The way we've been doing it up till now, we're cramming those commuters into a jam subway train. So when your commuter gets to work, he's disheveled, she's annoyed. With the loudness regulations now, we know that we don't have to do that. Now you can think of your uh, commuter or your content as arriving at your place in a stretch limo with lots of uh, foot room and lots of headroom. So the material can play loud and proud and not have to sacrifice dynamics for the sake of level. The new gen tools are a great asset in this new world of freer dynamics and loudness target levels. You have rhythm, melody, and dynamics. That's the tripod that holds up a musical piece. So dynamics restore the expression of music and that's been so missing over the past uh, almost 20 years. So the VizLM allows you to know exactly how compliant you are with the channel that you're going to be broadcasting on. And this allows you to optimize your program for that particular channel. I use the VizLM to set my monitor level. If I'm starting a program that I know it's going to be broadcast at minus 16, I'll use the meter to initially get my mix approximately at that point, adjust my monitor level to where it's comfortable, and then I'm kind of set. I'll spot check back again at VizLM throughout the project to see that I haven't veered too far from it. When the program is complete, you can scan the entire show. And if something looks off to the eye, you can go back and spot check and then see, well, does it sound the way I wanted it to sound, or is that something that I overlooked? So that function alone I find super, super valuable, and it means you don't have to be watching it all the time. But now that the need to digitally limit is being lifted because of these loudness targets, uh, it's going to be a great new day, I think. You know, it's a very exciting time now in audio with these new uh, views of loudness and uh, how it will impact production, how it will offer more freedom in producing our art and our craft. And it's just great to have a reliable, easy to use, visual uh, set of tools to help in that effort. Thank you.